two things. It changes uh, hormone levels in your body, so it reduces estrogen. Uh, estrogen, I believe, is the equivalent of fossil fuel for cancer. Yeah, I think it's estrogen in one form or another that drives it. There are other things that can set the stage. I think estrogen is the fuel. So regular exercise will change uh, some of the hormonal uh, profile in your body. But there's another thing which is interesting, which I would like to investigate a little bit more, and that is that cells that, ha that don't have enough oxygen tend to want to divide. Well, try and kill somebody and see if they don't fight back. Okay? Okay. So I think there's something to be looked at there. There are a couple of things. When you exercise, you're moving blood around. So perhaps you are delivering things to these damaged tissues or tissues that are on the brink of the cancer transformation. Perhaps you're delivering things to them, your immune system, can use to fight that. It may be just a matter of delivering more oxygen and in the presence of elevated levels of oxygen, uh, they're not as likely to divide. I don't know. It's just a theory. It's certainly something that I think we could understand more about. better. I already said that estrogens are sort of fossil fuel for um, cancer growth by and large. Why? Well, what causes normal breast cells to divide? It's, es it's estrogen. So if you have breast cells that are um, exposed over a period of time to environmental assault, low-level radiation, pesticides, mutations, getting older, whatever it is, this collection of events that is ganging up on your normal breast cells. And then you ask them to start dividing, either with birth control pills, hormone replacement therapy, or even, uh, as we have seen, women who have never had children, so they're constantly making their own estrogen. Women who are overweight, particularly postmenopausal, all of that extra Fat tissue is a factory for making estrogen. It's pouring out estrogen. So birth control pills and hormone replacement therapy have been shown to be associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. In fact, those two things will produce breast cancer in some women. We don't know precisely which woman, but we do know that they cause breast cancer. In 2005, the World Health Organization um, which is a pretty significant body of uh, scientific researchers. Um, but they were asked to take a look once again at birth control pills and hormone replacement therapy, and they did. And they looked through the world's literature. And they published a huge report, which you can find on the internet, and you will see that in 2006, I believe, the World Health Organization classified birth control pills as a group one carcinogen. Red benzene birth control pills. When I discovered that, I went charging into my colleague's office next door. She is a Luigi Lamb. And I said to the secretary who I know, Mary Ann, I said, give me some birth control pills. <laughs> she was like, what's going on? So I told her. And she said, you know, you can buy these over the counter in Europe. So I opened the packet, and I looked through the package and started to see, well, what does the FDA require the drug companies to write in their inserts, their package inserts? And it's rather critical. Yes, perhaps, a little bit, we're not sure, maybe, whatever. If you take birth control pills before your first full-term pregnancy, your risk of premenopausal breast cancer goes up 44%. Now, 100 million women in the world are using birth control pills right now, every day. 100 million women are taking a birth control pill. 
and they are excreting it, or a form of it, into the environment. You know, they're not excreting it into the drinking water, but over a period of time, I rather suspect that we're bumping into it. Um, dioxin, apparently, has some estrogenic uh, action, and dioxin is everywhere. It's a byproduct of fossil fuels. So, um, it only makes sense to try and avoid birth control pills if you can. First of all, you need to know what the risk is. Hormone replacement therapy is clear. Uh, I, I just can't imagine that there's any discussion about the risk of using hormone replacement therapy. There are other ways to protect your heart, and certainly, if you're interested in protecting your breasts, I would see Uh, I actually have gotten into arguments with my colleagues um, who are drinking red wine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, when I discovered uh, those data for myself, uh, there was a hint of this that came out of the Nurses Initiative, which is a large prospective cohort of women that's been followed for years, and they were the ones who first basically suggested to us that there was the relationship between hormone replacement therapy and breast cancer. And uh, it was this nurse's study that suggested many years ago that women who drank alcohol had an increased risk of breast cancer. Um, the initial data uh, were that, uh, well, if you drank more than three glasses of wine a day. So I uh, thought, that's great, I'm off because I love wine and I love beer. But two years ago, uh, the follow-up study and other studies, which were triggered by that study, showed pretty definitively that there is a linear relationship between drinking alcohol and increased risk of breast cancer. The more you drink, the higher the risk. So, I was like, oh dear, okay, well, so I drink champagne <laughs> on my birthday. <laughs> and any time it comes really close to me, I have lots of champagne, but it doesn't come close at all, so. And I drink uh, non-alcoholic beer. Uh, I tried non-alcoholic wine, for a total waste of money as far as I'm concerned. But Odules and Vex, they make non-alcoholic beer. I'm very happy with that. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, and yeah, you can't sleep. You, you hit the sharp you're edge, hot you're hot in the cold. The thermostat, <laughs> the clothes, they're on, they're off. Yeah, you can hang meat in my house. Yeah. Uh, you don't sleep, that's an issue. You hit the hard edge of everything. Okay. It's really hard getting out of reproductive life. It's hard getting in. Remember being 13? How much fun was that? How much fun was it for your mother? Okay, my mother had four of us coming out at the same time. Plus herself as well. It's, I think you have to know it's not easy getting through it, and it's going to be rough. There are things to do. Exercise really helps. What you eat has an impact. You'll figure it out. I think, as I say to my patients, look, if you get breast cancer, you're coming off the hormones anyway. So if you're going to come off anyway to get breast cancer, why not just come off, okay, and not get breast cancer? Or if you get it, you got it fair and square, you didn't give it to yourself, right? Or possibly give it to yourself. So I think that there are a lot of things that you can do. Mostly uh, serenity prayer comes in handy. And whatever you can do to reduce your stress, and there are a lot of ways to reduce stress. You may need more emotional support, you may need more exercise, you may need to pay attention to what you're eating, because maybe coffee is not good for you at that time in your life. You'll get through it. You'll get through it. It doesn't usually last forever. It usually lasts for about two years, and then sometimes the hot flashes, you'll get them from time to time. Um, I would just encourage you to, you know, strap yourself in and, and get through it.